So I'm going to pass it off to Davo and his uh, commentators as we begin this run of the Minish Cap Any Percent. Great. Thank you so much. Yeah. Hi, everybody. My name is Davo. I'm going to be running Minish Cap Any Percent today. Uh, we'll be starting in about 10 seconds. Um, so this game came out in 2004 uh, to widespread criti critical acclaim, um, but unfortunately sales were pretty low. Um, so the final result was that you have a really good game, but I think not really a whole lot of people know about it or have seen the speedrun, so I'm very excited to uh, show it off today. We have uh, Nimbus on the comms, whom I'm sure uh, a lot of you know, uh, as well Hello. as Myth, who is one of the probably most uh, intelligent people about this game that exists in the world, so I'll let them introduce themselves. I totally didn't spend eight hours trying to figure out better Octo than it last night. <laughs> <laughs> I swear if you would have dumped that on me <laughs> like the day before Raph. <laughs> would not have been Um so this game basically follows the same story as any Zelda. Um there's a hero in green who rises up to save Princess Zelda. Uh, from an evil. Uh, in this game, we actually get Vati as the main villain as opposed to Ganon or Ganondorf. Um, kind of a unique thing. I'm actually, I think Vati was around in uh, some of the other 2D Zelda games, but they're not very prevalent overall. Yeah, the Four Swords games. Yeah. I think he's um, the only non Ganon villain to get reused. Don't quote me on that. Yeah. I think there was also Aghanim, but I don't think that was. Uh, well, Thogginum is sort of uh, not important. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler so, news, come on. Yeah, the beginning of the run um, is uh, is going to be very casual. It's going to be very much of a, like, a, just like a fast but intended playthrough for the first 30 minutes or so. Um, at the beginning here, we do need to make sure that we've got enough rupees leaving this house. So Dava's going to be doing an RNG, RNG manipulation here. Uh, he reset before the run and did the right number of rolls so that this pot gives a blue rupee. And we have 25 rupees, um, which combined with some rupees later on in the run is going to let us buy the items that we need. And now Dava's just going to be running through the festival here to like um, follow Zelda on our way to the castle. Yes. Yeah, there's a, I would say RNG minips are probably one of the uh, most interesting, most unique things about this uh, speedrun. So RNG minips are pretty hard to do in other games. Um, but with this one, there's just a single value that controls RNG. Um, it resets every time that we save and quit, or every time we do a hard reset. So we're actually able to make use of that and do some very specific inputs very specific timings to change the RNG in very specific ways. Uh, so for example, in the beginning there, during our hard reset, you saw when we mashed through the title screen, um, which didn't allow the RNG to change during that time. And then we just did two rolls in the first downstairs room, uh, which advanced the RNG twice. And that is the RNG that gives us the blue rupee in the pot. Uh, and they get more complicated from there. That was uh, far and away the easiest one. But I love that we like start the run with something quite a bit technical, and it's like, okay, right, we need to talk about like some real like technical thing with the the speed run, and then we're just gonna have like pretty <laughs> straightforward and intuitive yeah. stuff for the next half an hour. So yeah, right. it's n nothing gonna be really crazy right away. Yeah, unfortunately, we don't really get any items in the beginning, so it's really hard to do anything outside of the simple simple RNG minute. This game is well made, let me tell you that. Yeah, Very well made. it won't let me break it. <laughs> Come on, Nintendo! Great! Please! Please. Break already. The meme with the guy with the stick poking. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> let, let us not do Octoclip, please. <laughs> Uh, so the, the route, there's a bunch of different routes that have been discovered for this. I gotta say that the like the glitch hunters have really been working their their tails off. Um, but there's a few different routes. Basically, they revolve around um, how many times you can skip getting sword upgrades. Uh, so this is the most advanced route. This is octo clip route. Um, and in this route, we actually go through 
four dungeons before getting any upgrades to the sword, and then it's only because we have to. Um, so you will see here, um, Vadi has ruined the festival and is going to um, pretty much ruin everybody's day, which is real. It's a real bummer. Um, but unfortunately, he is going to turn Zelda into stone. And then our task throughout the game is to reforge that mysterious sword piece that's broken off. We've got PPO in chat, who is a veteran Minish Cap speedrunner, has been around for a decade playing this game, and points out that back in the day they used to get uh, four blue rupees, and until they realized that there is a spot in uh, Mount Cronal that has three blue rupees are really easy to get, and it's easier to get those instead of manipulating a bunch of rupees at the, in Link's house before leaving. Um, so as I mentioned, this is uh, Octoclip route. Um, we are going to be doing a trick later on that's far and away the hardest trick uh, in any of the routes, which is Octoclip uh, is frame perfect and nearly pixel perfect. Um, very difficult to do, but essentially allows us to skip almost the entire um, fourth dungeon. So it's pretty nice. Yeah, it skips a bunch of cutscenes. Yeah. So now Davo's into like regular gameplay here. They're going to be rolling. Rolling is quite unique for a 2D Zelda game. Uh, I don't think there are any other 2D Zelda games that actually have rolling, other than like, uh, Full Souls Adventures. The DS ones do, but it's oh, weird. Oh, yeah. yeah. Those are two and a half. D. It doesn't count. Yeah. <laughs> and Davo's just going to be making use of the invulnerability frames that we get during rolls to just completely avoid enemies and try and not take any damage at all. Well, I wouldn't say completely, but I'll do my best. <laughs> um, but yeah, as you noticed, uh, I've rolled through a couple of enemies here. Um, we actually can kind of use the invulnerability frames at the beginning to, to do that. So that's, that's pretty helpful. Um, otherwise, we would probably have to do quite a bit more health management than we are now. Uh, so we're now going up to Rescue Ezlo. So this is our companion uh, for the speed run. He is a uh, sentient hat, who's a wizard uh, who is turned into hat by body, to be his apprentice. Um, and as far as companions go, uh, I think he was a pretty popular one when he came out. Sassy little guy. Um, he has a few, uh, we call them Ezlo triggers, but if you roll into a zone where Ezlo will talk to you, tell you something, um, we spend a couple of extra seconds uh, as we wait for him to appear, if we roll into that as opposed to walking into it. So that is, I guess, one thing that we have to look out for in the first part of the run that honestly, until approximately the end of the second dungeon, this game is basically just casual. Yeah, especially in the first dungeon, there are like a million Ezlo triggers we need to not yeah. roll into. Each one of those triggers is Ezlo backseating you, telling you how to solve puzzles, and um, yeah, hand holding you through every single little thing that gets Some a little bit obnoxious. Kinda, trying to tell you how to live your life. It's really, it's a lot. It wouldn't be a Zelda game without a hand holding companion. <laughs> That's right. Uh, so now we are in the. Uh, Minish Village that precedes Deepwood Shrine, the first first dungeon here. Um, so we're going to go talk to the village li not librarian, elder I think maybe? Scholar? Um, scholar? No. Mm -hmm. no. Priest? Um, something. <laughs> priest? Something? The vicar? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be speaking with uh, Viceroy Minish Man. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he's the only one that speaks uh, the Lord's English, so we have to get this Jabbernut, um, which is basically a babble fish that fits in our ear and allows us to talk to. 
be Mitch. Right, and this is the actual elder of the village. Yes, yeah. right. Um, and by the Lord's English, I do mean Japanese. Um, it's the the first the first version of this game that was released was uh, was the Japanese version. Um, it was a couple things I think were patched when it came to EU and US. Um, so we do use Japanese because it's a little bit more buggy, and we can do a couple of skips here and there that we would not be able to do. In this. Yeah, Japanese predated the European release by like two days. No, no, it was a week. Yeah, sorry, it was a week. Um, so the EU carts had to get printed quite a while in advance. So the EU um, game is an earlier build of the game and it's missing things like the bomb bag in the shop. So you can't get the bomb bags on the European version like you can in Japanese and North American. Um, and very importantly, it also has some bugs with being able to fast travel, which makes it just over slower, just because at one point in the run, um, we, we aren't able to fast travel like we can in Japanese, so Japanese is better because of that one thing. And US is just very slow in general. Yeah, yeah. US is worst overall <laughs> for pretty yeah. much everything. Yeah, at, at, uh, the North American release was a couple months after. It, it was in then 2005 instead of 2004, so they changed a lot. And uh, they made Ezlo talk to you every single time you load a game, uh, which is very slow. It adds like 10 seconds to every save and quit, so... No, we're not going to be running that version. <laughs> yeah. Fun fact, when I uh, started speedrunning this game, I wanted to use the US version because I didn't really understand how speedruns work and I uh, wanted to be able to talk to someone to figure out what I should do if I got stuck or lost or something like that. So. Yeah, Davo's making quick work of all of these puzzles. These are all, like, it's the beginning of the dungeon, so it's going to be introducing a lot of the basic puzzle-solving mechanics that uh, you see throughout the rest of the game. Pushing and pulling objects, defeating enemies, collecting keys and opening doors. And, Classic uh, Zelda fair. Yeah. Some fancy um, stuff that you wouldn't expect to see on a GBA, like this rolling barrel. Very Like, it's quite the technical feat. <laughs> So many people see this game as like, uh, this was a DS game, right? Because it's uh, probably the best looking GBA game ever. Yeah, the art style is really nice. It's like a it's like a 2D Wind Waker or something like that is how I describe it. It's uh, very colorful, very vibrant. It really matches the, uh, the tone of the game as well. And so Link is... The... Oh, sorry. Yeah, oh, no, go good. Ahead. I was just saying, Link is so expressive in all of his animations. Um, yeah. I've had to go through the animation sprite list, and it's big. Uh, there's so yeah, many more than in, in like <laughs> comparison to the Link to the Past Link sprite. It's wild. There's like the, what, uh, eight thousand different sprites for Link. Eight, eight individual poses, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I did not know that. Um, yeah, the. Uh... The expressions are great. The uh, the Minish Cap Discord I, is like the the emotes are like half just Link expressions. I think for different things. Uh, so now we're into the first mini boss, which is uh, not a Mario knockoff. Trust me. This is yep. Madapilla, not Wiggler. Yeah. <laughs> But Davo very nicely clears up that boss. Uh, that uh, was a two cycle. It can go to a three cycle if you don't slash the pale uh, enough, um, which loses a lot of time. And they made quick work of that mini boss, and now has the gust jar. Oh yeah, we we saw the Skyward Sword run just now, so um, we're gonna see like the origins of a lot of the items that were in that game. Well, that was Skyward Sword, so I think that would be the origin of the items for this game. It's earlier. If we're going to get into the timeline, maybe. <laughs> and 
and uh, not to interject, but speaking of Skyward Sword, we did have a, a donation from Mini Mini three five two saying, "Gotta get those magnets." Which, if you would like the Skyward Sword magnets by Minda, remember to donate during uh, this run. So what we're doing here is probably the hardest part of Deepwood Shrine. Uh, so this is the just lily pad maneuvering in general is weird. Um, I don't know how you're doing this and talking. <laughs> I can, I can, I don't yeah. Know how you're doing. <laughs> That's my secret. My brain is just off most of the time anyway. <laughs> Nobody home. But yeah, lily pad movement takes a lot of practice to get consistent at. Um, it really is tricky. And the having to deal with the pesto RNG as well, these enemies completely random. Um, generally, like we know where all of the enemies in a room are going to be when they spawn in the room, uh, when we load the room. But then RNG means that they move about a bunch, so there's a lot of um, it's a lot of reaction based um, movement that you have to do in this speed run. So now we've got the big key, and this is going to take us right back to the boss room. So we will be getting to our first boss, which is one of my favorites. Uh, another thing about the, the EU version, for some reason, it's it's like the only competent guards in any Zelda game. Uh, they guard Hyrule Castle, and there's a section in the casual run where you have to roll around them and hide in the bushes, uh, similar to what you do in Ocarina of Time, if you're more familiar with that. But in EU, the guards are, like, laser-focused, and it's very difficult to make it through them without getting noticed. Um, and then in, in the Japanese the version... The North there. American version. Oh, okay, is it the North American? Okay. Yeah, it's the, it's the enemy version. The, the last guy is um on a different cycle for some reason and yeah it just means that he always spots you but luckily we skipped that uh now due to some recent discoveries i say recent it was about two years ago but it's recent it to like me okay <laughs> <laughs> newest major discovery anyway yeah Uh, so this is just a green chew, if you haven't noticed. Um, I really like this boss because I think it does a really good job uh, showcasing... Oops, I'm bad in here. Um, it does a really good job showcasing the interesting things that you can do with the shrinking and growing mechanic. Uh, so this, this enemy is one that's just sort of a breeze um, when we're normal size, but since we're minish size, it's a full, a full boss battle, so... I just think that's kind of an interesting way to start out the the boss rush. Yeah, definitely when starting out, um, like, it's such a straightforward boss. It's like, oh, it's just three cycles and you just, like, slash it a bunch of times. And just the more you find out about it, just it just opens this can of words, worms of complexity and it, it really becomes just this <laughs> weird beast. <laughs> Yeah, the decomp folks have a, uh, a fun time with uh, with bosses. So we just got the earth element, uh, which is that set of purple drops that came floating down from the heavens. Uh, so that's our first element. We're also going to be after the, uh, in order, the fire element, the water element, and the wind element. Um, so with those, we can get the four sword, not the master sword. Four sword. We tried collecting the elements in the order um, Earth, Wind, and Fire, but unfortunately, we can't <laughs> quite do that. <laughs> yeah, we were trying to figure out if that was possible. But... There is one block preventing us from doing it. Oh. Yeah. So Link is also the avatar. I see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love James Cameron's work. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
So yeah, coming up here, Davo's gonna grab a fast travel point. We'll be using this quite a bit later in the run. We'll be grabbing one more, I think. They're yeah, just handy to get around the map. Yeah, they're, uh, I think, supposed to be like ancient relics left over from the Wind Tribe or something like that. Some some Zelda nonsense like that. But yeah, they, they help us fast travel around. We get uh, one automatically when we uh, get the Ocarina, and then we have to open up two on the route. So here I'm doing the first uh, soft reset of the game to get out of uh, having to talk to the uh, Kinstone minstrel man walking around town. Um, Kinstones are another sort of unique aspect of this game. Um, so they were introduced, I think, as sort of a, a way of encouraging exploration and talking to different NPCs. Um, kinstones are essentially just these little uh, stones that you get. Uh, you can mix and match them with folks around town in order to unlock, uh, you know, a spare bottle, which we'll be doing on the route uh, to get early access to different areas, um, you know, to, to unlock um, whole new, you know, caves and that kind of thing, uh, which was interesting. Um, it makes Hundo very difficult. Let's go, first try. Yeah, yeah first try. <laughs> so that was a, a guard skip. Uh, we basically reset. Oh, there we go. Oh, and the roll nice lift. Nice roll lift. Thank you. Uh, a couple things going on there if you guys want to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, I was talking through about Kinstones. Davo did a guard skip. We're supposed to show that guard that we learned the spin attack, but we can avoid doing it by um, going to the tile that's next to the sign. And that records that as Link's last safe tile, so that if he ever drowns, he'll respawn there. And we exploit that the road doesn't update Link's um, like safe tile at all, uh, and walk along that road and then drown. And uh, the guard tries to like cover us and like come down and like block us off. Uh, and then when we respawn, we're the other side of the entrance from him, so we can just slip by before he has a chance to block us. Yeah, it's, it's very scare boy. It's a fun thing to do. It saves like a second, but it's swag, so everyone always yeah, does it. You have to. You are contractually obligated to do that if you're running this game. And the other thing is uh, roll lifts. So every uh, like when you see that Davo's going to place a bomb, he's going to roll, and he's trying to do a roll exactly two frames after placing the bomb, and um, he gets <laughs> when he, he'll get it success. Uh, it's frame perfect, by the way. And if you get it successfully, the bomb kind of like bounces on in place, and what happens is the fuse timer gets reduced by a whole second and explodes faster. So we try and do that whenever we can, whenever we're handling bombs. Uh, there's like six or seven places in the run that we try and do it. Yeah, it's uh, I I don't find that I'm able to do it too often, but it's worth a try. It's fun. It feels nice when you get it. Oh, by the way, if we haven't mentioned, uh, there's various cracks and such uh, in the overworld where Link is able to shrink and grow as kind of like the uh, core mechanic of this game. Um, pretty fun, pretty unique from other Zelda games, I think. Speaking of growing, could I read a couple yeah, of donations? Yeah, now's a great time. <laughs> <laughs> our total is growing. We had a donation from each dog, our previous runner. She says, flappers, flappers, look, I'm flapping really, really hard. All the luck to Davo carrying on the Zelda segment. And I believe uh, there was also some uh, contribution towards the cat choice poll, which I love, as well as a $5 donation from comics. No comment, but um, I also went towards one of our polls. Uh, just a reminder, we have got that magnet incentive and polls ongoing. I see all the flappers in chat. Um, and that's all we have right now. The unofficial emote of uh, Raph. Yes. <laughs> so here we're getting uh, our first kinstones. You see that was a red kinstone. Uh, that will be used much later to trade with um, the smith, uh, who might be Link's dad in this game, maybe? I don't Grandfather, know. Grandfather, I believe. Grandfather, okay. There's a relation. Daddy. Daddy. Actually, <laughs> that's wrong. <laughs> we'll be trading with Daddy later on in the speedrun. Um... So yeah, we get, uh, in this run, we get two red kinstones. 
as well as four green kinstones. Uh, there's a manip uh, called quad, which uh, allows us to get all four of those green kinstones in a single place. So it's very nice. Um, it is very difficult, though. It's probably the thing that I struggle with most in the run. Um, but it's easily, you know, you can retry very easily. It's not, not a limiter per se. It's just my my own personal vendetta. Uh, this right here, that skip um, that I not just did was the uh, not a glitch. <laughs> yeah, not a but glitch. They, it's used in glitchless, so it's not a glitch. Um, was the first thing I think like, the first sequence break discovered in Minish Cap speedrunning? If I'm thinking of it right. Oh yeah, um, the first ever run by TSA back in like 2005 was yeah. uh, it implemented that, and they didn't do saving quits. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah, because that was the SDA days, right? Yeah. So we got yeah, some... Yeah, to totally resist. legit. Definitely not spliced run. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got some rupees to get the power bracelet, which is going to allow us to uh, climb up and down. This area is at, like real brutal when it comes to enemy RNG, and Davo's on a really good amount of health. Uh, you can get hurt way more, and... Uh, if they did take more damage, they would have to uh, go into a little cave at the base of this climb wall to um, refill on health. Um, and hopefully, if the boulders are nice, Davo shouldn't get hit again. Don't say anything. It's going well, don't say it. Is it you're nearly at the top. No, oh, there, there you go, look, it's fine. It's fine. I'm Everything's fine. fine. This room's a little bit scary as well. Uh, enemy RNG can oh, hit you is. whilst you're trying to pull this back. This is good, though. Nice. Yeah. Okay. That, it so looks if that tight. tech tight hits you, um, you do drop the mushroom and you have to drag it all the way back. Uh, and I do mean all the way back in order yeah. to reach the other side. Um, so Ezlo lies to us as well as, uh, you know, constantly interjecting with information. So there he says that the um, the falling uh, droplets are, do, are like hurt as much of a, as a boulder, uh, but that's false because they only do a quarter of a heart, whereas the boulders do a half a heart. Yeah, Ezlo, notorious liar. Um, I think he encourages us to get into uh, a mine cart and go in an abandoned mine as well. He's a uh, a fun person to be around, but maybe not the best parental guardian <laughs> for like it's a bad influence so we're going to be getting down to uh, another little minish settlement here before the second dungeon uh, this is where we get our sword which has been broken, repaired into the white sword, which does feature in some other Zelda games. And from there, we will repair it. This is uh, certainly one of the sections of the run. Mm, for sure. Agreed. Some people will try to tell you, oh, that's not a section of the run. They're wrong. We are extremely close to being able to skip this, and it's... Like, we have a cool way of being able to um, break out of bounds here, but... Um, Ooh, nice. Only if the level geometry was ever so slightly different. Yeah. There's a lot of things that are nearly skippable, but... <laughs> it's tantalizingly close. Yeah. So now that we've pushed back that Easter Island head, we are going to be able to access the village right here. We just shrink down. Uh, this part is was pretty difficult for me, I think, uh, as a new runner. I often would come here and be on like a quarter to a half heart and die on one of those moldozers. It's a, uh, an easy area and your brain's turned off and... Um, yeah, I think, the, like, the I, like we mentioned, the... Oh, well, there's there's a couple of, like, rocky overhangs in the passage yeah. leading to the village. Um, those always used to get me, because the moldozers will hide under there, and then you'll 
try to roll through and uh, take damage. Shoutouts to my first ever race of this game, where I went through that section on a quarter of a heart, and I hit a <laughs> invisible moldy that I couldn't see because it was hidden behind a bit of a, a leaf. <laughs> no. Yeah. I've had a couple of uh, runs on good pace die to those guys. So now we're in the Cavern of Flames, or Cave of Flames. Uh, we're getting our first part of the run. That's pretty good. Um, we're going to... Not... Okay. Here are some original Zelda enemies. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> also not, not featured in any Zelda. other Zelda game. <laughs> Definitely not. No, that would be plagiarism. Another interesting thing is we can do uh, sword slashes. Uh, I call them slash stabs. I'm not sure. That um, yeah. There's an, 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 an actual name for them, but uh, if you slash an enemy, you can also hold out your sword and do uh, an additional like half damage or something like that. Um, so if we're able to corner enemies against a wall, that can be a fast way to get a kill. A lot of enemies' health is um, just slightly more than the damage that the sword does. Great so it's not me. two hits to kill. It's what you know. It's yeah. like 1.1, but so we can just take them out with a slash stab. Oh, that's unfortunate. I'm doing a, uh, a poor job of managing these not bob bombs today, but uh, they are they tricky. are RNG based. Uh, so here so, we'll do a little yeah. fight against the Muldozers. This is also pretty RNG based, um, but we very got nice. really good RNG in there. Very nice. Um, that fight can go very south very quickly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes uh, the best you can do is have three Muldozers run into the path of the Gust Jar, which we did get there. Um, and then we were actually able to use one of the uh, naked Muldozers to uh, uh, kill another Muldozer. So we just have uh, one in its shell and one out of its shell to take care of. That's the best case RNG that we got. But uh, you can also come into the room and only have one guy enter the Gust Jar and the others are spread out across the room. And it can get pretty hectic pretty fast, so we got lucky there. So all of this first section of the dungeon has been pretty like um, casual and straightforward. Uh, is like how you'd normally do the dungeon. However, from this room onwards, uh, the dungeon is going to be done very different differently. So we're going to be encountering the first real glitch in the run called um, diagonal angle retention. Um, so. The um, the game normally thinks that Link can only face four different directions, up, down, left, or right. But when jumping out of a hole, um, the diagonal angle that you jump out of a hole gets stored to this um, direction um, part of memory. So the game then starts thinking Link is like facing a diagonal direction, which shouldn't be the case. We can then interact with other objects with this diagonal value to like move things diagonally. So Dav is now going to grab this pillar here and start pulling it diagonally. Um, and they're gonna pull the it. Loading zone here. Yeah, they're gonna pull it into the doorway and it yeets the loading zone. So now they're not gonna be able to transition into the room above, but walk through it to get out of bounds. First, they're going to pull the chest back because it's got a small key, which is going to be useful in a little bit. Now they're going to be doing some out of bounds movement here to land exactly on the right tile to avoid a soft lock. Bam. And they nice. land exactly on the bridge. Nice. That's really tricky. If you land one tile above or below that bridge, you are stuck. Also, this is a really cool fight. It kind of speaks for itself. Sick. Nice. Yeah, it's very satisfying to get. Uh, so we just got the cane of Pachi, uh, or Pasi? Pachi. Uh, I don't speak Italian. Anyway, um, this uh, is an interesting item. Um, it allows us to basically flip uh, blocks and uh, we can put kind of this magical energy into uh, a hole on the ground that'll launch us upwards, uh, but we do use it for a few tricks here and there, so we'll be talking about those um, as they come up. Wordle hop specifically. 
uh, which reminds me a lot of the uh, so the uh, one of the great things about the um, Minish Cap speedrunning community is that it's it's very multinational. Um, so we have contributions from uh, a lot from from France and Germany, especially uh, at least that's what I know of. So we have names like Classique and Modern, um, as well as Wordle Hop. Um, so. The reason, if some of you are wondering why we have a trick called Mick Yeehaw, um, <laughs> it was on my stream one day, I was remarking that it's probably a good thing that um, the Americans don't find any tricks because we would name them things like Mick Yeehaw. It just kind of caught on. <laughs> we realized there was an unnamed trick and I said, oh no. And uh, it caught on. <laughs> so. So Davo's doing a bunch of angle retention stuff here with the Rollerbite 2 clip out onto layer 2. Now um, Davo's above all of the layer collision with the walls and stuff and can just traverse the whole second floor and skip it to um, get directly to the boss. And grab a fairy before going in because we're going to need that fairy in a, a little bit. But yeah, that's the entire lava basement <laughs> skipped, which uh, saves like three minutes. Yeah, that room is very slow. So this is Glee Rock. Um, he is the second boss guarding the Cave of Flames, and uh, it's a fairly easy fight. Um, we just have to turn his turtle shell upside down so it falls on him, and um, go and slash a few times. Uh, hey, I've never noticed this before, but it seems like there's actually some Glee Rocks on the walls. Oh, yes, oh, wow. right. You're right. Wow. Oh, I never noticed that before. Oh, that's so interesting. Um, yeah, wow. God, I need Lord. to document this. <laughs> yeah, Clear Rock can just kind of chain combo you on fire like that. So fortunately I had enough health. That can be disastrous if you're on uh, low health, if you lose the fairy here. Uh, it can be pretty bad, but we got it, so we're, we're fine. Uh, you can also Luckily, find hearts yeah. in these fires, which totally makes sense. Don't think about it. Um, it can be helpful for managing everything. Link just sets all of our hearts on fire. I love that. You should also probably seek medical attention if that's the case. <laughs> Yes, if your heart feels like it is on fire, do seek immediate medical help. <laughs> um, if you are a loved one <laughs> has their heart on fire, you may be entitled to financial compensation. So here we get the fire elements. Here at Hylian Lawyers, we work for you. <laughs> Have you been pushed out of your home by uh, an incursion of a dark force? Has a speed run a Korok clip three? <laughs> are, you, are you a Korok that's been absolutely brutalized by the supposed hero? Look, of they this deserve land? it, okay? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. Those poor things. I know. I just love their face when you launch them to, like, with a rocket. Nintendo absolutely knew what they were doing, by the way. <laughs> I don't think that this is this is a feature, not a bug here. Uh, so here we will be doing Crown Clip. Um, I will focus a little bit for this, so I'll let um, yeah. folks yeah. talk about this. But. So Dev is going to start off doing a, a bottle and vulnerability glitch where he dumps a bottle whilst reading a sign. And now he can walk through all of the enemies. Now he's going to start uh, manipulating our buddy here, Billy the Beetle. Um, we're going to be moving him into a specific spot and he's going to push us um, into a wall and let us clip. Now, he, we need to do some weird interaction with like how Link pushes against objects, but he's, um, Davo's going to be charging up a value whilst um, the beetle is stationary and then doing some very precise movement to try and preserve this value as they get clipped into the wall. And that should just trigger Link into a jump animation like, like so. Now we can just do a bunch of out of bounds movement to get over to Western Woods, uh, where Davo is going to be doing McKeehaw. 
So Makiho is a uh, pixel perfect um, trick that we can't see because Link is off screen. So he's got to hope that he gets it. If he doesn't, he's got to save and quit. And he gets it first try. There we go. go. First try. That is Mikiha. It saves like a few seconds, I think. But uh, hey, it's there three seconds. Go. This is pretty pretty well. Very important. <laughs> Always. Thank important. you to everyone who donated for that goal. By the way, we really do appreciate it. Be sure to donate to Planned Parenthood now if you have not already. So the reason for doing all of that is it skips having to get the the sword upgrade from the castle right now. Um, and there's a bunch of other skips that we're going to be doing um, that are going to mean that when we go and get the red sword, we can actually we're actually going to have the the element after as well, so we can just upgrade it straight to the blue sword, and we can cut one of our trips to the castle down, which saves a lot of time. But in the meantime, we're going to be getting the boots. Um, yeah. So, so after the go ahead. Miss. I was gonna say after the Mickey Ha, we read that sign. That sign is the trigger to start this whole boot sequence. Right. Um, and the boots will launch us into the swamp. Uh, so the swamp is where uh, basically from the swamp until Octo Clip, the run is very difficult. Um, so I will probably be letting these guys talk over me while I'm focusing a little bit, but um, we're good for now. Uh, oh yeah, we're about to hit for donations if we have any donations. We have to do. Yeah. Uh, we don't have any right now, but just a reminder: uh, the donate link is in the chat. Uh, we have some current polls live, <clears throat> and of course, uh, the current reward you can donate for during the duration of this run is Skyward Sword magnets. They are very adorable. I would definitely do that. And I'm learning a lot just listening to you all talk about this. It's been great. Um, the commentary and just watching the run. Oh shucks, Liz. You said all the renders. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> also, is this Melon or Romani? This is Melon. This is Melon. Okay. okay. And also, when we went past her in that room, you never see her in that room in um, in regular gameplay. Uh, it's a combination of the uh, like glitched world states that we're in due to doing sequence breaks. I did not she's, know that. Yeah, um, because she's normally either outside or immediately goes to town uh, with Epona to start selling long on milk. So yeah, she's not supposed to oh. be there. Accidentally uh, cancelled the tornado there. I didn't even know I could do that, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, pressing R lets you drop early, but I don't See. know if you ever do that. I don't think so, no. Not in any percent. Yeah. Do we actually know what percentage we complete the game on a given run? Uh, there is no in-game percentage indicator, so it is whatever percentage you would like it to be. Hence, any percent. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, here we're just gonna buy a mushroom that's gonna help wake up the shoemaker in town. It is the last thing we're gonna buy in this run, so we don't need to worry about rubies anymore, thankfully. Yes. That was Syrup the Witch, if we have any Oracle of Seasons or Ages fans in chat. Or a few other titles, I think. There's so many Easter egg um, like NPCs and characters in yeah. this game. If you've not ever played Minish Cat before and you're a fan of Zelda games, uh, you're doing yourself a disservice. Go play it, especially if you've loved some like Win um, Wind Waker or Ocarina of Time. Definitely check this one out. Yeah, it is a it is certainly a lost gem. Um, I think the reviews are like 96 percent or something like that. Like it really is a phenomenal game. Very well designed. Um, so be sure to play it if you get the opportunity. All right, we have the boots now, so our our finger is temporarily saved from. Uh, needing to do a million rolls per second. Um, we'll use the boots to get down here over to the swamp. So yeah, we're now going to be hitting an incredibly difficult section of the run. 
everything from now until the end of the next dungeon is uh, probably the hardest stuff that is outside of the final dungeon. For sure. Oh wait, no, you're doing Octoclip route, never mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's that gem we need to get into later. Everything from now until the end of the dungeon after this is the hardest. <laughs> So Just whatever I'm doing right now is the hardest thing. Yeah. Especially I'll, if I'm not doing it well. <laughs> we're going to be encountering the first real trick of the run as well. Um, <laughs> I feel like I've heard you say that before. <laughs> well, those have all been fake real tricks. This is the first yeah. real real trick that we're doing. Yeah. So Davos come over here to get the bow. We're going to need that in the next dungeon. And also for the final boss. But now they're going to start doing some RNG manipulations. Every time they save and quit, we're going to be chaining an RNG manipulation into this. So now this is the quad manipulation that they mentioned earlier. We're going to be trying to get four green kenstones. Uh, we need these green kenstones to be able to fuse with all the Tingle Brothers. And that's going to let us get the magic boomerang later in the run. Which is very broken. And it's going to let us do some glitches to skip large sections of dungeons. And... Uh, the last kinstone is incredibly difficult to get. They got unlucky there and only got three, but there's an easy backup that they're going to go for now. Well, in a minute. Uh, we're going to do... Oh, the sorry. Hack. Yeah. Uh, uh, they're going to be doing that, that backup in the next dungeon. Here, they're going to be manipulating a P-Hat. Um, we've got our, our pal, Petrosha the P-Hat, uh, that we are going to be using to clip out of bounds. Very similar to what we saw in... Um, in Mount Crenel, but all of that was incredibly precise movement to make sure that the P-Hat was in this spot, and now we need to make sure that the P-Hat doesn't die. Now, Davo's going to gingerly maneuver the P-Hat into the bottom left corner by the bridge, and when it's there, it's luckily going to be able to push us into some invisible non-collision that is unique to this bridge corner, which lets us clip out of bounds. And that's this setup looks. It was. Wasn't I think it was sure slightly off. Yeah, it was yeah. slightly off. Um, yeah, this is very now. precise. Um, pixel perfect. There is a range of pixels that we can get that should work, and Davo gets there. it very nice. So now. They're on layer two and can just run over the top of the entire swamp <laughs> and walk through the like the walls to get out of bounds into the next area. Skip yeah. everything here. We yeah. skipped oh, this having is to get supposed to be old section, but we're just not about it. Yeah, this yeah. is like three minutes of movement and stuff. Just completely skipped, and they're in the next dungeon already. All right, and from here until basically the boss room is more or less two big minutes. Yeah, so another RNG minip started. They are going to be climbing up this um, right tower section of uh, the dungeon here. Um, the aim is to get a small key as quickly as possible. And um, the small keys in the section are found in levers uh, that you pull out from the wall. And then it drops the key down through the hole um, to the bottom floor. Um, to pull this lever without shrinking, Davo is going to try and use these two um, armos to clip into the stationary one. Perfect. That's nice. lever clip. That's, that's pretty tight. That's that so, is that's a that's a difficult trick. And, yeah, yeah, it's a fun one. All right, and here we're gonna get the last kinstone that we needed. So uh, by manipulating the RNG values, we just did a boot dash, which is twelve RNG advances, and we get the fourth kinstone that we needed. Um, there's also That's... a, uh, you can try to manipulate the dark net here, uh, into giving you, uh, the last red kinstone you need. I am, uh, not going to be attempting that. I mean, I'm, I'll, I'll try, but, uh, we are not making that a needed thing in the run because that's a, uh, also a very precise move yeah, that was extremely brave for Davo to leave Swamp without all of the kinstones and rely on uh, the the manipulation here, because you get one shot at this manipulation. Um, yeah, excellent show of skill. So here's the first Dark Knight fight. We're going to be seeing loads more Dark Knight fights later on in the run, um, and Davo showing you the uh, one of the strats we use for dealing with Dark Nuts, which is doing a boot bonk on against the wall. Relies on 
behind them and then yeah. they're able to uh, slash at their back until they die. They, fortunately, they have like a stun lock uh, that they can go into. So all of this was to get to this section of the dungeon, which has the moments, another item from Skyward Sword. And now we have the mitts, we can fight the boss. We don't need to go and get the boss key because we're going to be doing another boss key, uh, boss door skip. So this is going to look similar to what we saw earlier. They're going to be going through the exact same section of the dungeon, back to that Armos room. Uh, but again, all of this is RNG manipulated. All of this movement is very precise to make sure that all of the enemies are changing RNG, but we're going through the rooms at, with the, the same timing. Grabbing a kinstone here because that's going to be useful later. And here we're going to manipulate an Armos into the bottom left corner instead, where it's going to clip us through a block. Very nice. nice. First, first try with the roll as well. Yeah, first and try now, with both Armos, but it's pretty good. Here's portal items. So uh, if you use the mitts while clanking on a portal, um, you get displaced a little bit and can jump up into a wall. And then combine that with a bomb to just push us up onto layer two, and we can skip the entire rest of the dungeon, and we're right in the boss. All right, so that was probably one of the hardest sections of the run uh, done right there. We have a little bit of a break, and then Temple of Droplets, com Temple of Droplets comes up next, and that is... Uh, probably the hardest trick there is that that's that he had uh, return. So. Oh, the classic uh, <laughs> Nintendo um, hand with eyes boss. Yeah, yeah. That'd be like Wind Waker or Mario 64 or 800 other Super Mario games. Galaxy. But yeah, so inside Mazal, you have to slash the correct pillar. The Which pillar it is is RNG, but it can never be the same position twice in a row. So since it was in the bottom right on the first cycle, we know on this cycle it can't be in the bottom right again. I think OOT Bongo doesn't have hands, uh, eyes in his hands, but he has very sensitive hands. Yeah. <laughs> he does have like a center eye part. He does. Yeah. yeah. The glowing stump thing. Mm -hmm. Wild that they put that in a children's game, huh? That thing scared the tar out of me when I was a kid. Uh, so you can actually, uh, it's a little bit tricky, but uh, you can walk through the hands while damaging them there. Uh, so we can use that to oops, use that to get to the, uh, the pedestal to shrink a little. So that's the last, um, or I'm sorry, that's, that's uh, Mazal in Fortress of Winds. Uh, we are actually going yeah. to... Um, I'm going to grab this heart container just to be safe. Oh yeah, um, you got to grab yeah. that for safety. Oh, but, you actually grabbed it. Oh, you grabbed Okay. <laughs> I thought you were joking. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I don't want to die. <laughs> Just to be a little bit safe. But normally, uh, we would skip that heart container. We need to damage ourselves down to half a heart um, in order to do some uh, death abuse. So here in this segment of the run, uh, it is a little bit cooled off now, but we're just going to be trading with some tingles um, to get rid of all these kinstones we've had stacking up in our inventory. I know everyone loves some tingle. You get to see him a lot in this run. Yeah, yeah this this section is a lot of uh, um, running around, setting things up to make the rest of the speed run very fast. Very important that you also talk to Tingle um, after fusing with him, um, and that makes sure that his brothers spawn. I did talk to him, right? Yes, you just did. Okay. You did. <laughs> you gotta double check. So, this is the uh, the kinstone that Davo collected back on Mount Krenel much earlier on in the run. And Excellent. this gets... Uh, uh, this lets us get a second bottle. Um, there is a reason why we're collecting bottles with fairies. Yes. If you know what a bottle with a fairy lets you do. 
we'll be doing it a lot shortly. Yep. It's, this is a Zelda speedrun, remember. Oh no, there's so much damage being taken. Oh man. Make sure you don't die. Oh. <laughs> Actually, make sure I don't die right now. <laughs> make sure I don't die yet. Um, so there are, what, three death abuses in this game? Oh, oh. yeah. In this route, yeah. <laughs> in this route, there are. There's an extra one for Octo. There's an extra two for Octo. The Lon Lon one, also. Oh, you're right, yeah. There's an extra two. Uh, so what you just saw was a portal uh, laid down that allows us to, using Ocarina Glitch, which we haven't quite done yet, um, allows us to uh, sneak into the penultimate dungeon a little bit there. That's probably something worth explaining, the Ocarina Glitch. So, yeah. yeah, we grabbed the ocarina at the end of the previous dungeon. We didn't get an element like uh, we'd gotten all of the other dungeons, and, um... Well, I guess the ocarina's a fair trade because it's an incredibly busted item. Uh, it lets us do a trick called the ocarina glitch, um, which is very powerful. It essentially stops, um... On the first screen that uses it, it just stops time and it stops things from running. Um, and we're going to be exploiting that with a trick coming up very shortly in a minute or so. Um, called Portal Jump Storage. What we're going to do is we're going to go to Lonon Ranch. We're going to die on a doorway. And that's going to open the doorway. And then an open doorway is something that we can use to get the Ocarina Glitch. And with the Ocarina Glitch, time gets frozen. We go up to a Minish Portal that we open up. We jump onto it, and then it jumps us off at a weird angle, and it lets us get up onto a, um, a section that we shouldn't be able to have access to yet. Um, we're trying to go and get all of the Tingle Brothers. There's one left of the pink one, uh, ankle, and... Um, they are behind a cave that requires a clone puzzle um, to solve. And in order to solve clone puzzles, we're supposed to go and upgrade our sword to get the cloning ability. So we don't want to do that yet, so this is why we're going to be doing this here. So there's the portal that um, Davo just bonked into. And now they're going to be doing a, a pretty precise um, death abuse setup here. I am going Definitely to save just to be safe. Yeah. Perfect. Nice. And a green kinstone for luck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right, Very nice. So Ocarina... This is Ocarina yeah. Glitch. Uh, you can see we basically stopped checking collisions uh, for the most part. Um, yeah. We use that yeah. quite a bit from now on. It, 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 Ocarina Glitch is also a frame-perfect trick. Um, you have to press the Ocarina um, on one frame during um, like some movement inputs as well. So um, yeah, getting it first try is also is is like is really sick. Yeah, keep that in the back of your head for the rest of the run because we do like eight or ten more ocarina glitches. Yeah. <laughs> At least they're not always first try, but uh... right. Getting them in like a couple of tries is still very impressive. Uh, and this game does run at 60 FPS, by the way, which makes it quite a great deal harder. <laughs> so now we're just hitting these four switches that were revealed uh, from trading with those tingles, and we're going to use it to get the Magic Boomerang, which is a, a very broken item that we use to great effect. Yes, it's an optional upgrade that requires a whole side quest to get, so you know it's going to be very busted. Oh, nice roll. That's risky to go for to roll directly onto the ladder, but nailing that's pretty cool. That's good, man. Alright, so now we're gonna damage down. Nice. Clipping into the tree like that is also pretty tricky. 
But yeah, that's a very fast way of damaging down. And getting perfect um, RNG on all of these trees as well to get all the fairies. Very nice. There is a 6% uh, chance they don't drop a fairy. <laughs> yeah, we actually did in rehearsal uh, that tree dropped a, uh, a green kinstone instead of a, a fairy. Which was fun. Oh, oh no! Oh, no, nice. that's unfortunate. Let's go. Okay. A damage nice. down with bombs. Uh, You'd be fine, bomb-wise. But now we're going to be doing another death abuse off of the doorway. Um, this is going to be skipping the flippers. Oh yeah, at this point of the game we were supposed to go to the library and do a book quest or something. Yeah, no, screw that. We're going to the next dungeon. Who needs flippers? Books are for squares. Oh, first try again. Nice. Nice. Great. So now we're just going to run across Lake Hylia, as you do. And we are headed into Temple of Droplets. <laughs> so this is a very long dungeon. Um, for, for a casual, this is going to be a very fast dungeon in the speedrun. Um, we completely broke it. So, um, we don't actually get any small keys, right? We're just going to do Ocarina Glitch here. Um, oh, yeah. that This is the downside of the Ocarina Glitch. If you mess up the inputs, you walk down the stairs, and it loses a lot of time. But, nice. hey, there's a second try. Right? Nice. It's not like too I was... bad. It loses a few seconds, but... Davo's gonna get the Ocarina Glitch and come back to the first room. Uh, Ocarina Glitch stops us going back down a layer once we go to an upper layer, so now we can just walk over the top of all of the walls. As well as, you know, walking over water, walking over, uh, like, void. It's a this very game, powerful trick. This game does have ice tiles as well, which is oh. not oh. fun. <laughs> Sometimes you'll get... You'll get stuck on a corner and Link will, like, vibrate as he attempts to figure out where he's supposed to be. Um, which I can relate to, but it's very annoying in the speedrun. There's, like, this room, and then, uh, after the mini-boss, there's, like, you're gonna have to be doing another room as well with, like, ice physics in it. It sucks a bit, but... At least it's not the entire dungeon. So, now we got the boss key and the magic boomerang, we can do boss door clips. So, if you throw the boomerang, hold the boomerang, and open the door, uh, Link doesn't transition to the next room and he gets placed out of bounds. So now Davo's doing out of bounds movement to skip the entire first half of the, of the dungeon and get to the Blue Chew mini boss. Um, that's like, saves like 10 minutes. <laughs> the most hated mini boss, I think at least. It's, oh, it's essentially oh. just Green Chew all over again. I think it might even reuse the droplet animation. Um, but it's just blue and it's on, you know, it's electrified sometimes, so it's, yeah. It was a cheap shot, Capcom. Uh, we're also going to be damaging down here to a very specific health value. We want to have three quarters of a heart left uh, by the time this is done. That allows us to die at the right time and clip into Octo's room. Yeah. In order to be able to fight the boss normally, we would have to go and activate these two switches um, to um, unlock the boss. But uh, those switches are slow. We would need to have the red sword to be able to create clones to be able to push the switches, and we don't have that. Uh, and also cutscenes would be playing whilst we push the switches, which are just, yeah, also slow. So we completely avoid all of that. Uh, by doing the hardest trick in the entire game. Uh, it's called Octoclip. So Davo is finishing up this fight. This is the last cycle of it, making sure that they're on the exact right amount of health. And this lets us get the Lantern, which is only needed to kill Octo. We do not need it for any other part of the run. <laughs> yes, it's sadly one of the uh, one of the things that we have almost figured out. But it's the it's the ball and chain it. from um, yeah TP from TP yeah. 
So Davo is now going to be doing another. If they save and quit, you know what that means. They're doing an RNG manipulation. So essentially, we're just going to be pushing this pot into place, um, and then we're going to do a precise series of bounces and death and ocarina glitching in order to push ourselves past uh, this giant frozen Octorok down here. Yeah. Uh, which is the... Oh, well, here they go. There's the Death Abuse, they're going to equip the shield and try and shield bonk and Ocarina play at the same time and they get it! First try, and first they're try, the let's, clip. Go. let's, let's go. go! Let's go! <laughs> Insane! That is oh, so hard! <sighs> <sighs> okay, now I can exhale and finish the rest of the run. That was Whoa. insane. That's very yeah. good. That's that's. Can we get very, some claps for Davo? Oh my goodness! Wow. Like it, that's... it's harder than it looks, and it looks very hard. And it looks hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, that, uh... that is a raw. Like you have to just nail a frame perfect input to get that. Um, <laughs> yeah. If you uh, if you fail that, um, you have to reset and you lose about a minute. So uh, it's a brutal uh, trick. If you decide to go for it, yeah, which uh, which we uh, had a, a little has debate the whether or not to decide to do this in a marathon. Now, it's passed now. It's, it's no problem. Yes, the Octo plushies blessed it. Thank you. Yes, yeah. I need to get one of those. I think will help me with the run. Uh, so nope. for now on, the run is just kind of fun. Honestly, the uh, the last dungeon is coming up. Palace of Wings. There we go. Uh, so there is a manip to uh, to deal with this last phase. So the way Octo works is that he always uses rocks in the first phase um, and then does a suck, rock, suck, rock, rock pattern in the second phase. This last phase is just uh, random. So the most common pattern, uh, about 56%, I think we figured out yesterday, uh, is yeah. for him to suck you in, dealing with the damage, and then rock in the ink. I literally did the statistical analysis yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we want to get a zero ink, which is a 25% chance. We didn't get it, unfortunately. So, um, yeah. Statistically, it's a 25% chance. In actual speedruns, it feels like a 5% chance. Um, usually happens on runs that aren't very good or when you don't need it. Okay, oh, so we are getting oh. two inks here, which is bad luck. That's so unlucky. This is the worst luck and the least likely to happen. Yeah, yeah. it's we're, like we're an 18% chance. Try yeah. Punishment. That's okay. And as bonks as, we as well. By, as long as we don't get hit by like three rocks, we're good. I think you're going to get the legendary two ink, three bash. Oh no, it was a two bash, two ink, which is close. At least there wasn't two and a half ink. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> two and a half, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> two and a half suck. He suck and then he reconsiders his life halfway through. I need oh, I I need to calculate the odds of two and a half. <laughs> <laughs> I have a pretty good estimate for you right now. So that's the third element, and now we're just headed off. Uh, we're supposed to go to uh, the Royal Crypt, which is a whole side quest where you're supposed to unlock the. Um, the final, or the, the final normal dungeon uh, by going to the king's crypt, and he gives you the secret, which allows you to travel to the sky. But we kind of just ignore that, uh, and we kind of just glitch our way up there by force. <laughs> so that's where he wants us to go, uh, but we are not going to do that. Swords. Yeah, Dabu, so you need the swords. <laughs> the swords. Oh, you Dabu, need the swords. You You're right. Sword. I'm so yeah. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna go to the castle first to get the the sword upgrades. We're gonna stack two I'm sword sorry. upgrades in one. I'm, I'm still reeling from of the what's to come. But... Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that was an intended part of the speed run. Uh, a sequence break from the sequence break, if you will. Right, so, so oh, God. <laughs> oh yeah, you go ahead. Normally, after Cave of Flames, the second dungeon, you're supposed to take the red, 
the white sword come here, get the red sword. But through a bunch of different glitches, we've been able to put it off until all the way now, so we can get two swords in one visit. Yeah, I believe this is supposed to be our second time coming here, but coming here for the first time. Mm -hmm. The first time you come to the castle, you can just run straight through like we're doing now. Um, the second and successive times you come, you're supposed to navigate through the um, like the maze with the guards. Um, but due to us uh, doing the Krenel clip skip earlier and then the run and McGeeho, um, we skipped a cutscene which um, actually makes the guards start patrolling. So that's not something we have to deal with ever and we can just walk into the castle every time. So now we have the ability to make clones, uh, which you can see here with our sword. That is uh, supposed to aid us in some puzzles. We do use it in uh, the following two dungeons, um, but we have been able to skip that until now. So the more you upgrade the sword, the more clones you can make. Uh, so we can make two when we have the red sword, and now, or I guess we can make one when we have the red sword, and now we can make uh, two additional copies of ourselves. I wonder what sword will let us be able to create four links. Must be like the yellow sword or something, it, right? It will be the fifth sword. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's the master sword. This is the master sword. Yeah. You could yeah, it has a blue hilt, that's definitely the master sword. But the master sword was usually more purple. And colored grading is weird in the GBA. It's close enough. And so now we're gonna go to that portal in South Harrow Field. Yeah. So here's here's the preview that I set up. It's paying off right now. You're welcome. <laughs> Speedrunning community. <laughs> uh, and as I mentioned, we're gonna be uh, using some ocarina glitches to go past guards that are blocking the way up. Nice. It's the first. Absolutely nailing these frame perfect tricks. Right. Sorry. I just said something that the new. Oh no. <laughs> what have we done? So there's a saying I have with Ocarina Glitch, you either get it first try or you get it tenth try. But oh, uh, it actually Dava gets it third try. There it'll work, there it'll work. Uh, so this is, I honestly think, by and large, probably everyone's favorite dungeon, uh, Palace of Winds. It's just a very... It's, it's still intense in terms of the movement that you do, but it's just a very, like, s there's a lot of satisfying movement here. Um, it's the only uh, IL that the Minish Cap community has to date. Yeah, to date. To date. Uh, there's more coming, but... Wait till everyone starts doing uh, Hundo Dungeon ILs. They're gonna be fun. Yeah, this room kind of sucks, but it's dealt with very nicely by Davo. And Devo doing a swag boomerang through there to kill some uh, flying bombs. Um, we didn't actually see them, but they're this enemy that's currently off screen now. Yep. Uh, there were two of them next to each other that he hit off screen. That was an auto scroller, so it's like, yeah, just do some f fun stuff during that screen. <laughs> nice uh, damage uh, boost on getting set on fire. <laughs> Yeah, uh, when Link is on fire like that, he uh, moves faster. Um, but the fastest way to put it out is by frantically mashing all four directions. Uh, so it's kind of fun because it looks like, uh, as we said earlier, Link's heart is on fire. Uh, this is my favorite uh, s uh, segment, uh, favorite fight in the game. We can very smoothly kill all three rounds of those Wizards with bombs and with our lantern. 
Uh, fun enough. fact, if you're planning on playing this game, uh, the Lantern is a very underutilized combat item. It allows you to uh, burn the... Uh, I know there's a name for them, but the uh, the mummies. Um, oh, Gibdos? Gibdos, yeah. It allows you to just turn them back into Skeletors. Um, <laughs> and, uh, so there was a very <laughs> cool trick there. That was a uh, cool dream yeah. jump, and it skips this entire floor by doing a precise jump onto a moving platform. So not a glitch. Not a glitch. Yeah. Not a glitch. But this is. This is the first real glitch of the run. Uh, this is called Stair Clip. <laughs> so what I'm doing now is I'm resetting my pixel, my subpixels, uh, which will allow me to get into a very oh, exact Oh no my gosh. Beautiful. That was no! Oh, no! That's unfortunate. Oh, that's very unfortunate. Oh, okay. you hate to see it. Oh, you got the cape anyway, so you get to do this yeah, section a little bit faster. That'll add a little bit of time <laughs> to the estimate. Um, a couple minutes, but... Yeah, um, this is where your rando knowledge comes in. Because he knew how to do all these rooms fast with cape. Yeah, so once in a while, those place. floor masters can just be extremely mean. Yeah, I honestly, that was, that was my bad, uh... Should have stopped the the boots there. You can use the game to jump it. through this room. Oh, I can. You're right. Man. I don't play. <laughs> I play random. But I don't play that much random. <laughs> Commentator assisted speed run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is a cast. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. A lot of damage from that. We promise we like this dungeon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So this is Dream Jump if you if you missed it before. Just barely get onto the edge there. Losing a minute to getting grabbed by the uh, the wall masters. What is this, my glitchless attempts? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> getting revenge for being skipped in Fortress. Uh, so this is that stair clip again. Yeah, so this is not just a pixel perfect setup, but it's sub pixel dependent as well. So, yeah, very precise movement to get this. And um, uh, you normally have to shimmy a bit to get it perfect, but Davo just fucking nailing it every time. So, let's go. <laughs> I was trying to beat you in Palace ILs. I had to. <laughs> So that skips a real long um, platform ride, uh, like a literal auto-scroller where we just sit and ride a platform for 40 seconds. Um, and this now we're hop, yeah. yeah, we're chaining this into Wurble Hop, so we're doing the diagonal angle retention we did in the a Cave of Flames earlier with a uh, cane shot in the hole to spring jump at a diagonal angle onto a wall on layer 2 and skip a small key, uh, uh, skip a small door, saving the small key and we're going to be using the small key to skip a bunch of stuff um, on the top floor of the dungeon. We would have to do a couple of extra fights and extra rooms uh, to get to the boss key, but we can skip all of that by retaining this small key. Oh yeah, so Davo uh, doesn't jump to the very top of the clouds. Um, the To load the next room, you just need to touch the top of the screen, so they jump from the minimum cloud required to reach that in a jump. Uh, here is uh, the first Chain Soldier fight. We're going to be fighting another set in uh, Dark Hero Castle. Um, they do have the same amount of health, but the sword that we have here is less powerful than the sword we're going to have later, so we kind of like uh, learn different fight patterns for killing those guys. Another nice thing about having a boomerang is that we can turn these sprites into fairies. So anytime we run into one uh, in subsequent dungeons after obtaining that, uh, we can get a free fairy. So that's pretty nice. Yeah, so just like what we saw in Temple of Droplets with the boss door clip, uh, Dev is going to do the same thing. 
to uh, get onto layer 2, run over the top of all of the walls, skip the entire second half of the dungeon, uh, which saves like 5-6 minutes or so, and we're, we're in the boss. Alice is such a cool dungeon. It's very it cool. Yeah, it's a it's a combination of I think just getting to use a lot of the items and these, the glitches and stuff that we've had up until this point. It's where you really start to feel like okay, like I got this. Uh, so with this boss, uh, the goal is to basically slash Georg's eyes, uh, which as you can see here, this central red Georg um, has eight of them, and we need to target all of them in order to uh, damage him as maximally as possible. Um, and then these small blue ones have one of four eyes that open up, and the goal is to get it. So we did manage Very to... Very nice. nice. This there. is such a queen fight. I'm sorry, I need to keep oh, yeah. going until the end. <laughs> what are you doing, bud? <laughs> Alright, so here's where the RNG starts coming into the fight. Um, where is you're going to go? That's decent. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah, okay. very nice, actually. Yeah, Jorg is a largely deterministic boss, although this that previous phase can be a little bit mean. Yep. And then that is a, um, yeah, very nice fight. Very clean fight. Yeah, that's fun. A lot of jumping around, a lot of slashing. Two of Link's favorite things. Well, maybe not jumping around as much. Yeah, that boss is very fun. Unlike the upcoming bosses, but... <laughs> <laughs> you don't love Body 2? Come on. The not Dark Knight fight right before the final boss that you have to repeat if you die? It's great. Oh yeah, so from here for the next, like, five minutes is going to be a bunch of cutscenes. <laughs> yep, so... Uh, yep. <laughs> I was about to say, it's the perfect time uh, <laughs> to read out a donation. We just got a $50 donation from Chickadee in chat saying, Cat love and TMC is awesome, which is true. I have definitely seen that in the speedrun. And that went towards the poll, and now we have Cat in the lead ahead of Dog. I'm glad I did my host duty and getting that done at least. <laughs> You're not biased or anything, though. Oh, no, 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 definitely not. I don't have a little kitten running around at my feet right now, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but if I if I wanted to accomplish anything, that's what it's going to be. But, you know, there's still plenty of time to donate towards both polls. We have one about um, doing a different, uh, what language we're going to do a game in. And if you're a dog lover and you want to beat out the cats, well, you still have a chance. I wouldn't try, though. I mean, maybe. Go ahead. I would try. Please try. <laughs> <laughs> Got a doggo coming home at any moment. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, so this is the cutscene where it's supposed to have been revealed that uh, Body used to be Ezlo's apprentice, and he stole an all-powerful hat, turned him into a hat. They really like hats in this game. I, I, don't know. I mean, hats are great, don't get me wrong. Um, yeah, I believe in Japanese, the title actually means, like, Hat of Mystery or something like that. Yeah. Variation on the exact translation. Yeah. Of course, as soon as I said that, we got another donation from Beautiful Dandy, just popping off and said, Dogs rule! So that was for you, Davo, I guess. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Dandy, for being so generous. And just a reminder, um, the donation links, and as uh, as well, there's the active reward for the Skyward Sword Magnus. There's only about 20 minutes left uh, to mm. contribute towards those. Yeah, get your donos in. Um, I would say dogs rule, cats drool, but I think dogs definitely do them more. <laughs> I would say, yes, dogs yeah. definitely drool a fair bit more than cats. <laughs> So we are revealing the secret inner sanctum here, which reveals that Link was the prophesied hero. Just Spoilers. make sure you don't reset. Yeah, don't reset. Otherwise, we'll have to watch the intro cutscene again. No. Oh, 
Oh no. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh man. I can't believe I did that. I had my hands off the keyboard and everything. Ugh. The worst. It's okay. We're not that far behind schedule, right? No, no. <laughs> We've got an hour and 45 minutes to spare, right? Someone said, you know, run it back. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me do Octoclip again, please. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm taking my first try and dipping. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. love the art style in this game absolutely gorgeous i feel like a broken record sometimes but it just gets me no it's been yeah. lovely to see how much you all appreciate this game yeah yeah it was um it was a good one yeah we love the art style we just hate that how it's coded <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well said And so now we've gotten the fifth sword, the four sword, of course. Which allows us to make three clones. Yep. Makes sense. Everything makes sense. Five, four, three. Got it. Okay. So Dav is doing a setup here called Cutscene Walking, where we activate an Ezlo trigger as we start unfreezing these guys. And Link is supposed to be locked, um, stationary and un unable to move whilst all of these guys, um, like, um, get unpetrified, but right. because we're chaining all of these together, we can continue to walk. It saves quite a bit of time. So this is another stair clip, uh, like we saw in Palace, um, but um, this one's a little bit trickier to set up. Oh! This mob yeah, is this... also uh, pretty, pretty annoying. He is a big bully. Very nice. That yeah, is sub-pixel dependent, so it's like kind of random if you don't do the setup properly. And yeah, that lets us get onto layer 2 and then uh, skip past having to go and get a small key. We would have to go down into the basement and save the king and um, that's slow, so no thanks. Now we're in the main section of the dungeon. Uh, we're going to exit out of the main entrance and back, and that sets our save and quit location. So next time we save and quit, um, it's going to put us there instead of back down in the basement. So we don't need to do that stair clip again. So this is a uh, this is a cool room. Uh, this is um, a cannon room that we would need to create clones to solve. But Davi is going to oh, oh just miss using it the bomb strap. Really so you can really try it. It's oh, pretty cool. I wish I could have done it, but uh, there's a strat there where you uh, place a bomb and slash at the right time, and you're actually able to knock out those cannons in a single go without needing to make clones. You will need an extra bomb refill at some point. Yeah, there is a bomb, a pot, a pot coming up after the uh, the saving clip. Okay. Uh, okay. I think damaging myself down, I think, must have taken me out of it. Let me know when it's uh, coming up. Yeah. It's before the chest in the bottom left tower. So yeah, Davo is now going to be collecting a bunch of small keys in uh, Dark Hero Castle. Uh, we need to collect four to be able to get to the boss key. Uh, so we grabbed one there. We are going to grab um, another one here by doing an ocarina glitch and skipping to the second half of the dungeon. The dungeon can be thought of a big square and there's small keys located at each corner. So we're going to go to the bottom left, bottom right, and then top right corners. And we're gonna skip the top left because that's slow. Uh, so with the Ocarina glitch, they go up the staircase and back down. And now they're on layer two above all of the walls and can um, skip directly to uh, a later room. In this room, we're gonna grab the top left pot and that has a bomb refill. There we go. And, <laughs> and now they're going to go up to the um, this chest and grab it for the second key. Now they've done that, they're going to save and quit, go back to the beginning of the dungeon and uh, do the whole thing all over again. But instead of going to the bottom left corner, we're going to go to the bottom right corner.
Karina glitches have actually been pretty good today. Yeah. There is one more coming up, but... Yeah, the last one of the run, I guess. I gotta love skipping over all of the intended content. Yeah, there's a really slow section that you have to um, go through and like explore the outside uh, section of the dungeon and like glide around. And we're, we're skipping all of that, and it's like eight minutes saved by avoiding that. So here's a small key. Uh, now we're going to be going like backwards through the intended path through this section of the dungeon. Uh, there are locked doors that are blocking our path, but get, with combination of the ocarina glitch, which is nailed first try, and a cape jump inside of the doorway, we can land. We can transition um, like mid air and uh, chain that into jumping uh, a jumping animation to just jump over these doorways like so. Um, it's kind of hard to see what's going on because there is uh, like Link is obscured by the doorway. Um, when you have that like view removed and can see what's going on underneath, it's pretty straightforward. So that was the other chain soldier fight, and uh, Davo still has the Ocarina glitch enabled, so he's just going to walk over all of the void here and uh, use that to skip having to land on this platform. And uh, very nice. Bit That's weird. nice. Yeah. Bit of a weird bit coming down from that graded platform. You you have to. Uh, hop down and then roll in such a way that you uh, land on the platform again because I think it, it doesn't like does something with your position where it doesn't check it enough or something like that very nice, nice. unlock there so yeah. you uh, cool. really want to try to go for the stun locks on these dark nuts um, I remember hearing people remark that these duck nut dark nuts are some of the hardest iterations of the enemies um, and then there's also a uh, at this, right before the fight with the final boss, we have three Dark Nuts that we mimic in a pretty cool way. Um. So here we're supposed to go to all four corners and fight a bunch of Dark Nuts to get all the small keys, but we've already got three of them, so we just need one more. So we come to this top right tower instead, because this is the fastest one. Um, yeah, Dark Nut fights are tricky. Um, Davo's got a lot of experience with fighting them, so uh, can adapt to their movement and uh, kill them promptly. Uh, this is a, a genie room. One of them is real when there's a bunch of fake ones and you just got to feel it out. Um, it's a little bit scary. When they grab you, they can start juggling you and tossing you from one genie to another, and you just get perma stun locked for ages. Uh, and it's it sucks when it happens. But uh, here's the the final save and quit of the run, um, and it's going to be chaining into the final um, the final RNG manipulation of the run. Yes. Yeah. We're actually already doing that now. So hopefully from now and as far as they can go, Davo is going to be manipulating all of the enemies in the rooms coming up to give them the perfect um, luck so that they can do it as quickly as possible. Right, and again, all of, this, all of these rolls and sword slashes are all super precise. So uh, this is the Keaton room. This is a hallway just full of um, Keatons that move around randomly. But uh, with the RNG manipulation, they're going to move in exactly a uh, precise pattern. So Devo just times all of their sword slashes like that. No fear. And now it's time for the Dark Nut fight. Triple Dark Nut fight. This is one of the hardest fights in the whole game. And Davo just nice. is killing all of them, making it look easy. Yeah, that's that's a fun fight if you can get the manip. Um, 
Especially having played it casually, I remember how hard that boss fight was uh, in casual. So just being able to like jump over them and predict their movements is uh, gratifying. Uh, this minute actually extends uh, all the way, th I think, well, all the way through Vadi 2 anyway, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to be demonstrating that today, but that is something that uh, you can. Yeah, the Vadi nice. are also some of the hardest things in the entire game. I'd just love to uh, point out the sword slash to hit the eye, and the eye just ignored it, because uh, imagine eyes having hitboxes. Yeah. Yeah, that was really weird. I definitely should have hit, I think. Body doesn't have the greatest hitboxes in the world. Yeah, Betty is mean like that sometimes. He did turn the princess into stone. Oh, is that That's a probably six? Only another one, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So optimally, you do this fight in five cycles, but this is going to be at least a six now. Ooh, that was good. like a frame perfect roll to cancel <laughs> yeah it's on fire that was very <laughs> tight <laughs> i've never seen that before i don't think okay, so this is the final cycle and very nice so that was uh, the vati one boss fight um so yeah this is now going to be vati two um Killer of runs, destroyer of worlds. Yeah. Vati can just bully you by just not cooperating. Ooh. The idea with this boss fight is that you uh, find out what pattern his eyes are in. Uh, the pattern never repeats, so we know it's not on the bottom. Oh, is it the back? It's, it's never on the back. Oh, the yeah, back pattern rare. is very rare. The the odds are a lot lower than on the sides. Is that the Vatu. next statistical analysis myth? Oh, it's already been done. I just uh, can't remember okay. the numbers off the top of my head. I'm sorry. I'm a fraud. Yeah, left side here. Yeah, right, this is the last cycle they're going to try and do a spin attack with the clones. Um, so the, um, this boss has a lot of health, but for some reason when you do a spin attack with clones, um, it doesn't do damage, it sets its health to one above being dead. So then we just do a sword smash and it kills it. That was a pretty good V2. Um, yeah, that was, go. that was really nice, it cooperated a lot with you. Vadi uh, 2 speeds up as it moves around the room, um, or sorry, as it as it goes through its cycles. So the first the first cycle is the, uh, the slowest, and then the last one is can move pretty quickly around the room, which it can lead to a lot of chasing him around with your clones, which are on the timer. And then if he moves in a bad way or decides to use a move that can break your clones, it, it can get really tricky. Uh, but fortunately, we uh, had the eye pattern and the movement in such a way that we were able to basically chase him down and get it first go. Yeah, so this so is great. Like, Body's dead. Over. He did it. Like, yeah. Cool. Run over. Why is the timer still going? Yeah, that's weird. Yeah. Hmm. There's hmm. definitely nothing else left, right? Definitely Unless not. I'm guessing something. I'm just gonna run down here and get a fairy real quick. Uh, oh, you need to end on full health or the run's invalid, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine? Oh, man. <laughs> this isn't PK percent. <laughs> yeah, I think that's Wait. a... What huh? is PK percent? What's going on? This is definitely not a part of the game. Oh, this is... I forgot. This is Orbular Steve. He pays rent <laughs> in Hyrule Castle, and he's really mad because we just wrecked his castle. He was supposed to get his security deposit back, but he didn't get his security deposit back because he said there was like a stain on the wall. It's honestly so stupid. A very nice boomerang throw to stun the eye. Yeah, One more final perk of having the boomerang. Yes, yeah, definitely. Anyone who's ever str struggled on this boss fight, uh, you just sit on the portal and you're invulnerable to damage, so... 
Nice little casual hint there. Tip. It's always fun to watch speedrunners make quick work of the boss you died on tons of times in <laughs> casual. <laughs> oh, you, you haven't seen anything yet. They're about to play tennis. Uh, this is so hard when you're starting out because it just seems so arbitrary. It's very precise and um, yeah, uh, I'm going to be doing three volleys at the, uh, at the boss. And time will be on the second slash of the third volley. So this is the second volley here that we're going. be over. So we want to try to stay close to him so that he does the tennis. And that's time. GG. GG. That is the Minish Cap. Any percent current uh, Octoclip route. Um, yeah, so a big thanks to Myth197 and good luck to Nimbus125 uh, for your <laughs> incredible commentary today. Um, thank you to Liz for hosting us, to the tech team for helping us uh, get everything set up and running everything, uh, to the organizers for making such an amazing event run so smoothly. It's been a blast. Um, and to Planned Parenthood for all the great work that they do. If you didn't donate during this run, be sure to drop a dono later if you can. Thank you, Davo, and thank you, uh, commentators. It was you guys were great. <laughs> it was lovely uh, to see this art style in the beautiful Minish Cap. We've just got this final cutscene. It looks like Zelda gets a hat too. Everybody gets a hat. Woo. She's making the wish to uh, restore the world to how it was before. Yeah. Uh, Orbular Steve wasn't happy about the changes in Hyrule Castle, so... They're renovating. They're renovating. <laughs> All is well. The Octos dancing as they disappear. Um, if you are interested in learning more about the speedrun or potentially doing a speedrun yourself, the community is very supportive and very knowledgeable. Uh, the rando is also really fun. Um, so feel free to get in contact with Nimbus about the rando or Myth and myself about the speedrun. Uh, Nimbus knows about, we all know about both, but um, yeah. yeah, and the, uh, the Discord community is pretty lively and uh, it's a good time. Yeah, if you are worried about how hard all of these tricks looked, there's the beginner route, which is a lot more friendly to beginners. Yeah. And still quite fun to do. That's credits. Well, thank you all so much. It's been fun. Um, just a reminder, uh, the donate link, I'll throw that in chat. Um, we're going to be transitioning away from the very adorable art style of the Minish Cap into a little bit of a scary game. But stick around, there'll be more Zelda later on with uh, an any percent versus all dungeons uh, race um, with Breath of the Wild. But yeah, we're going to be transitioning over now. So thank you all again. Thank you very much.